All right. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Hope you're all right. Uh, my name is Yavar. Welcome to another one of our live past paper sessions. This one is, of course, a paper three session. And uh, the case study that we're looking at today is called Muka's Animal Adventures, MAA. Uh, some of you might find this uh, <laughs> very familiar. It appeared in the mock exam. So this is a good lesson to take, isn't it? So uh, this case study is from 2022, November, paper 33. And of course, what we do is we divide one case study across two sessions. So this is part one. And in part one, I'll go through the entire case study. We'll look at the content that's given to us. Then we're going to attempt the first three questions, uh, hopefully with time permitting, in today's session. And in the next session, we'll complete the case study with the other two questions. And that will be part two. Okay, uh, so, uh, just want to remind you of a few certain things. Uh, I've redesigned these past papers to look like the new look uh, exams. So now you have just five questions in paper three. So we'll have five questions in this entire paper. Uh, first two questions are eight mark, then there are two calculation plus essay on answer questions, and then a one twelve mark question, right? So those are the five questions. So I've just reworked the question to look like uh, the new syllabus. Uh, in its entirety, you are answering for 60 marks in total, and um, of those 60 marks, uh, 6 and 4, 10 are going to be uh, calculation, the rest is all, 50 is going to be uh, essay answer. Uh, uh, 2023 P4, do you mean the specimen, Anmol? Oh, you mean March? I haven't seen the March paper yet. Once I get my hand on it, I'll definitely, oh, if they have, then I'll surely, probably in the next session, I'll attempt that for sure. Thank you for telling me. I'm going to make a note of it right now so that I don't forget. Uh, so, Feb 23, March Okay. <clears throat> uh, if you don't mind, Anmol, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, so once I get my hands on it, I will share it with everyone. And we also share it on the platform so you guys can also practice it on your own. Okay, uh, and I think in, in maybe in another day or two, I'll also be sharing all the other paper four that I have reworked from the previous three that look like paper four. So I've made around six or seven papers that you can practice for paper. So I'll also have them uh, uploaded and uh, you can also practice those then. <clears throat> Thank you, Anmol. I'll save it at the end of the class. Thank you. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, paper three, 60 marks, five questions. And those five questions, may they, they, uh, CIE makes sure that they ask you about all five units. So don't leave anything to chance, read everything. Uh, of course, all calculations can be, uh, all calculations are part of paper three. So don't forget your calculator. Don't uh, forget to practice all your calculations. Uh, <clears throat> don't expect an entire CPA diagram. Or, or those big diagrams, because maximum there's going to be a four mark calculation question. So there'll be parts of a diagram maybe, uh, or, or uh, simple calculations, no elaborate uh, long uh, calculations. Like for example, even if you're, let's say thinking about published accounts, then they may ask you about a portion of it. They will never ever make ask you to make the entire thing again. So that's out of the window now. Anyway, so uh, let's begin. And um, when, when it comes to paper three, um, just uh, it's, it's always a good idea with any case study, of course, to look at the questions that you are answering, and just briefly, okay, don't don't look to answer the questions just by reading it first. First, just look at what are the main topics that you'll be tested on, so that when you read the entire case study, you know exactly where all the content is, right? So the um, the questions that we have, the first question is about. Um, Exchange rate, depreciation of currency exchange rate. So this is unit one being tested here, economic, external envir environment, part of Pestel. And then the next question is a question about marketing plan. So there's marketing, an eight mark question that we're going to do today. 
then some more marketing calculation, PED, price elasticity of demand, then we'll be calculating total contribution, and then there's a pricing decision to be made there. Uh, then question number four is a finance question where there's some more investment appraisal practice for us, so ARR, NPV, and of course, then we'll have to recommend whether to go ahead with the decision or not. That's always a 12 month question with investment appraisal. And then finally, question number five is about HR. Right, so uh, I, I suppose operations is a smaller part of the, this question, which is uh, finance and operations is put together in unit four, in question four, sorry. And all the other units are also represented in individual questions. So everything is there. Uh, don't leave anything to chance, prepare for everything. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do is, and, and this is what you should do as well, uh, read through the entire case study once first, okay? Uh, because you need to include points from across the case study. Yes, you can find content from uh, one part of the paragraph and that will be enough for most questions, but you still need to include other parts of the case study in your answer. That's what counts as evaluation. It's also good application. So read the case, case study once so that you, you can get ideas from other parts to answer. And I'll show you today, for example, in the first question, <clears throat> uh, we'll be using content from across the case study. So that is where you will see that being done. Okay, so let's begin with this, and this one's called Mooka's Animal Adventures. And just give me one second, let me get set up here with the right colors. That's important, right? Um, okay, so uh, MAA is a social enterprise. So whenever you see the structure of the business, make a note of it. So they're a social enterprise. That means they have mainly social objectives. Uh, profit making is not their main objective okay their objective is about social well-being so don't answer that oh, they should always look to make profit well the thing about social enterprises and if you remember and uh, maybe this is a good time to remind you of it uh, that social enterprise has what we call triple bottom line right and that's economic uh, economic social and environmental. So those are the things that they're looking to do, but economic means that you have to make a profit first. And then that profit is used to, of course, run the business and do the social welfare programs that you're running. So profit is, yeah, you have to make, but not with the intention to please the shareholders, to keep the business running. That's how much profit you need to make. So, so you can't take the angle of you have to be greedy to make profit in, in this case study. That's important from just these two words. So is a social enterprise owned by Muka and her family. M is, so this is a family social enterprise. MAA is, uh, is in country G in Africa. MAA is in uh, animal, mark, uh, animal park, sorry, an education facility, which aims to attract paying customers. So as soon as you get an idea of their product, make a note of it, but they're an animal park and education facility. Uh, they're not a charity, so obviously they are doing this for paying customers. MAA's customers are visitors from the local area as well as foreign tourists. So they tell us there are two streams of income. They want to attract local area uh, residents. Of course, that means there is a regular income. And uh, guess, I guess in seasons, so remember tourism is very seasonal. You have a lot of foreigners coming in as well. So you have two ways of making money. This will become important in the third question that we do today. Uh, MAA's Animal Park is located within one of the largest and most beautiful nature reserves in Africa. The, uh, the nature reserve is home to many rare bird, rare animals and bird species. So uh, I guess we're seeing something that we can call their core competencies. They've got rare animals and birds there. They're uh, located very close to a beautiful natural reserve in Africa. So they've got a lot of things going for them. And of course they should expect, uh, of course in Africa, you have summer season where people do come for safari and things and such. So uh, that's where the foreigners are coming in and the locals for year round income. The owners of MAA aim to make a profit each year. That's the economic side of triple bottom line, which is reinvested back into the business to support its social objectives, right? Social, environmental. MAA's social objectives are to promote the importance of wildlife conservation. Remember, that's environmental objectives that they have. 
So that's the first thing that they look to do, promote this. Then inspire and educate visitors to its animal park. So with kids coming there, you have like a show and tell, petting zoo, things like that. So that's how they promote it. And lastly, offer employment to the local population. That's the social angle. So they're covering the entire triple bottom line, what we were talking about here in this form within this business. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the introduction. Then we get a little flavor of the external environment. Following many years of economic instability and a depreciating currency, Country G now has a stable government and fast economic growth. Despite the rate of growth, country G's currency remains weak against most major currencies. So no matter what the economic situation, uh, the government situation is, the problem is that the currency is still weak against other major currencies. That means depreciated, right? The government is keen to attract more tourists from other countries. Now think about this for a minute, that when your currency depreciate against other major currencies, that means you become cheaper for the rest of the world. And that's why the government feels that it might be feasible to attract more tourists. It offers development grants to tourism businesses to improve their attraction and facilities. So this is some motivation um, for businesses such as MAA to promote more of their business so that foreigners come in, more tourists, and that way they also uh, earn some grant for their business. Okay. Uh, the first question, by the way, that we're going to attempt today is on the topic of uh, depreciation of currency, but we need to know what else is happening in the case before we can get to it. Uh, marketing. So uh, MA is a seasonal business and most foreign tourists visit during the summer. So that's their peak season. MA promotes itself through the tourism uh, tourist board of country G and through local tour companies and hotels. MUCA's key marketing objective is to attract more local and foreign tourists. I'm going to highlight this because we'll be answering a question on marketing plan. And that's where this is important. The marketing objective is to attract more local and foreign tourists, especially during the less busy season, right? Of course, there's less busy seasons as well during the year. That's where they need to bring in more people so that they can have better cash flow. Uh, to help achieve this objective, she will pre prepare a five-year marketing plan for MAA. And that's what we'll have to do in the second question today. Wildlife conservation is very prominent in all marketing communications, including on MAA's website. MAA's customers pay $10 to enter the park with reduced prices for children and school groups. The park attractions include a wide range of small animals in enclosures and an animal adventure education center with displays and activities. So this is how they're promoting themselves uh, through marketing communications. Wildlife is a big part of it. Uh, they charge $10. They have uh, education center and display activities as well. MAS Education Center promotes wildlife conservation and provides information about all the rare animal and bird species in the natural reserve. So they also want to educate people, right? provide information on all the animals. And that's something that could be part of the main attraction. So that's obviously something that they should promote more and more. MAS Park also has a successful souvenir shop. So the, whenever they mention something like this, a souvenir shop or let's say a cafe, that's an example of another way of making more income, right? When people visit, they have to eat, they have to buy things. So that's also uh, something to think about when it comes to revenue. Which sells high quality products, including homemade textiles made by local women's cooperative. Remember, they also need to have social objectives and they're fulfilling that by hiring uh, women from a local cooperative and they're able to make high quality export textile items. MAS customers can also pay extra for safari drives and a bird watching and bird watching tours in the nature reserve. So this is another way of attracting more customers: safari drives and bird watching tours. The safari drives are very popular with foreign tourists, in particular. MA often does not have enough capacity to satisfy due to insufficient vehicles and guides. So this is something. Uh, that we will be discussing in question number four, uh, where we will see that the option is to buy some new safari vehicles, and we'll have to see whether that's good or bad for the company. Okay, uh, Muka wants to increase MA's revenue. She is thinking about increasing the entry price from $10 to $12 for all adult customers 
or charging a higher price just to foreign tourists. So we will be looking at a question today, which asks, which exactly asks us this: that when we increase the price, should we charge it for all, or should we just charge it to foreign customers? That's a questionnaire. Should we charge differently for local? Or, or differently for foreign, we'll attempt that as well today. That's the third question in, in line. Market research suggests an increase in entry price from 10 to 12 would lead to a decrease in the average number of local visitors. That makes sense when price goes up, quantity in abundance goes down from 9,500 to 6,000 per month. So this number we will obviously be using for our PED calculation. However, most foreign tourists would be happy to pay up to $15. MUCA estimates the variable cost per customer is $3.50. So that's information that we will need for contribution today. Okay, um, so, so far we have a lot of information on marketing. They have uh, safari drives, they have souvenir shops, they have education and display centers. Somebody is the busy month, they wanna do something about the less busy season. Uh, they're also thinking about increasing the price and they want to see whether that's a good idea or not. Additionally, we know that economically things aren't going so well in terms of the currency. That's depreciating, but that's actually giving some opportunities for export. And they look to fulfill these three social objectives. Any questions so far? Any confusions? Anything you may want me to go over again? I'll continue. Uh, if you have a question, just write it up in the Q&A and I'll answer it. Okay, so there's a little more information. I want to read all of that first before we go to the questions. Finance. <laughs> MAA has high costs. The animals need daily care and the facilities and enclosures need regular maintenance to ensure customer safety. As well as revenue from customer parks, MAA receives funding from wildlife and conservation charities. Also, some businesses in country G make donations to MAA's animals welfare as part of their corporate social responsibility commitment. MA will receive a government grant of one and a half million dollars in the next financial year. This grant will be used to help MA to finance MMA's expansion plans to attract more local and foreign tourists. So what we see here, the important bit here is that they have high costs, right? They don't need to make sure that customers feel safe. They also get uh, funding from wildlife conservation and charities, uh, they are about to receive a grant of one and a half million dollars. So uh, yes, there's high cost, but there's also some money coming in, right? Um, then human resources, what do they have to do to manage the park? Most permanent employees, including tutors who work in the education facility have full-time contracts. Some live in accommodation at the park, MA also employs temporary workers on zero hour contracts during busy periods. So notice here we are discussing zero hour and full full time contracts, and this is the this is part of the strategy chapter in HR. So what I what I mean to highlight here is that don't leave anything to chance. Don't don't think that strategy chapters are only tested in paper four. They, there's an equal chance that they will appear in paper three as well. Okay, so um, some people who work with the animals are volunteers on MAA's popular work experience program. So they have a mixture of uh, contracts here. They have full-time employees who have been provided accommodation. They also have temporary workers and they also have volunteers who, uh, who are um, employed in their work experience program. Individuals who want a job working with animals can pay to attend a training course at MAA. However, MA is, it still finds it difficult to recruit trained employees. So that's a problem. There's difficulty in recruiting employees, trained employees, right? And that's important for customer safety and animal safety as well. Uh, Muka wants to make sure that the park has enough trained employees. However, she also aims to reduce MA's labor costs and the number of permanent job roles. So there's a, there's a catch there, right? How do you reduce the cost while still wanting more employees? That's what we'll have to figure out. Uh, similar businesses in country G are also expanding and recruiting more employees. So there are surely problems on the HR end. They have a mixture of contracts, uh, but they're still finding it difficult to recruit new people. And they're looking in the future to reduce the labor costs. And then we get to the final part of the case study. Luckily, this case study is just across two pages. 
new safari vehicles. Because remember, they also offer uh, safari drives and uh, bird watching tours. And in that part, they also told us that there's a capacity shortage and often customers have to be turned away. This is their solution to that. A local company has offered MAA the chance to purchase three safari vehicles for $40,000 each. So that's what we are proposing. The vehicles are two years old, but still in good condition and should have minimum of four years useful life. So we know that this information comes in handy when you are uh, calculating uh, ARR, NPV, all the investment appraisal techniques. Each vehicle will accommodate up to 16 passengers. So that's the good thing about it. You can accommodate more people. They will provide a comfortable safari drive into the nature reserve. So that's another qualitative advantage. These additional vehicles could solve MAS capacity problems and offer a high quality visitor experience. So uh, two birds, one stone, better experience. It solves your capacity problems. And that's one reason to go for it. MA would also need to employ a guide and driver for each vehicle. So that's where the cost of it comes in, a driver and a guide. That's the additional cost of it. Muka estimates the following data for the purchase of three uh, safari vehicles based on a safari drive price of $50 per person. And we're given this data here of uh, cash flows, of course, inflows and outflow. And that's the end of this case study. So that's all the information uh, that we have. Uh, if I were to quickly sum it up, their social objectives, uh, they promote wildlife conservation. They also hire locally to uh, local women's of cooperative. Currency is depreciating. They want to encourage more local and foreigner, foreign visitors during less busy periods. They're also considering increasing the price from $10 to $12. They have a souvenir shop. Um, they have high costs, but they also get funding from charities. Uh, they need to keep a mixture of different workers in terms of full-time, part-time, and volunteers. While looking to reduce the cost of labor, they also want to hire more trained employees, but that's difficult to do. And lastly, there's a chance to buy three new safari vehicles. So that's what we have to work with. Any questions about the information that we've just deciphered? <clears throat> no, we're good? Okay, so let's get to it then. Um, the first question is this. Um, analyze two opportunities to MA of the depreciation of country G's currency against most major currencies, which was mentioned in line 11 to 14. Now, the first question is going to be an eight mark question. Okay, and all eight mark questions only need knowledge application and analysis. There is no need for evaluation in eight mark questions, okay? So always a good habit is to divide your question into these three elements first. Okay, so let's do that. When I look at the question, the most basic concept that I can see is being tested here is currency exchange, right? So I can talk about the, the content that I need to talk about is depreciation of country G's currency. So that part is, knowledge. As long as I talk about depreciation, I'm okay. If I talk about appreciation, I will not be getting my marks. Then what are they talking about? Where is the situation being discussed in the, uh, in the case study? Well, it is depreciating against most major currencies. So that's what we have to see that how does it impact global sales? And that's my application there. And lastly, they want us to talk about only the opportunities and two opportunities only. That is my analysis. Okay, so I have to talk about depreciation. I have to talk about how it impacts global sales. And I only have to talk about two opportunities, no more. Okay, now in a question like this, it's always a good idea whenever there's a question on depreciation to just briefly explain what depreciation of currency means, okay? Uh, and that's where I will start my answer with a simple definition of what exchange 
rate depreciation is. Okay. And just also explain that you uh, become cheaper globally. Right. And always within the first paragraph, give a little flavor of the application as well. To explain that uh, country G is uh, facing weak currency. Right. And the impact it has is that it increases your exports and it reduces your impact. Okay, you must explain this point that what does depreciation mean? What is the situation? Well, this is situation, this is what it means. And now we have to see how can uh, this company MAA benefit from this situation? <clears throat> okay, and that's also something that I can mention here that MAA attracts Tourists, right? And tourism is a form of export. Okay, so that's how we're going to link it and then go into the first opportunity. So opportunity number one. Okay, and just set up your answer here. Don't be hasty. Uh, explain that uh, when currency appreciates what that means is foreigners get more value on spending in country G. Okay, so explain how it's going to impact then go into the analysis that well, how will this impact MA? MA could increase international promotions. Right? If you want, you can mention here social media probably. <clears throat> right? And what this is going to do, it's going to make tourism. country G more attractive, uh, which means that MAA sales should also be going up. Okay, so develop it entirely, application analysis together. Why it's happening? Because currency is depreciating, which means foreigners get more value or you know, the country G becomes cheaper for the rest of the world. And then MAs international, if they promote internationally, of course, that's something that will eventually benefit them. So that's one way to explain it. Um, another angle that I can give here is that uh, since they'll have more tourists coming to MA, uh, more foreigners, right? They can also be more, uh, more. Souvenir sales. Right. That's also an opportunity for them. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm just mentioning here that international, since the entire country G is becoming cheaper for the rest of the world, it's going to benefit MAA as well. People are not just coming to MAA because of depreciation, right? They're coming to country G. So I'm just saying MAA is a is a beneficiary of the whole situation of country G. Okay, now that's one opportunity. The other opportunity is actually not found in uh, in this. Well, we can talk about this point here. It offers, for the, the government is keen to attract more tourists. It offers development grants to tourism businesses to improve and their uh, attractions and facilities. So we can talk about this as well. There was another opportunity um, I can talk about my second opportunity here. And always lead with application that there are grants for 
tourism business. Right? And that way, if MAA can attract more foreigners, uh, they will also get increased funding. And why is this important? Because they already have, uh, they have high costs that was mentioned there. Or plus, you can also say it can be used to buy safari vehicles. Right? Increase in capacity. If you want to talk about that here, you can also mention it. Oh, I got a couple of comments here. Yeah, so we talked about Grand. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, Ryan. That was the next point I want to get, I was going to get to. That we've talked about these two points here, right? We talked about how you can attract more tourists. We also talked about that you'll have money to spend. But later on in the case study, when we're reading part about marketing, they also mention here that MAS Park also has a successful souvenir shop which sells high quality products, including homemade textile items made by local women's cooperatives. So if these are so popular, maybe this is an opportunity for them to export some of these later, right? I mean, a side business, you know, Disney also sells a lot of their merchandise uh, as an example of a park. So they can also do that here. So another opportunity. Remember, you only have to talk about two. This is just so that we have a point to discuss here. Uh, homemade. Oh, that doesn't look like home at all. Homemade textile items. You can do it. You can export. Right? And that will give you additional income. So that's another opportunity for them there. Okay, so you've got to see, that's why you've got to look at the entire case study to, to get enough points to write in your answer. If you would have just, excuse me, if you would have just focused on the paragraph on external environment, uh, you may not, you may have missed other points there, right? So uh, always a good idea to read the entire case study first. So that's how I would answer this eight mark question. Uh, two points, two opportunities, nice and clean with, in first paragraph, connecting knowledge and application, that's very important. Second paragraph, first point, second paragraph, third paragraph, second point, and just end it, no evaluation. All right, so let's move on. And the next question is nicely tucked in here. And here it is. The second question will also start with the word analyze, which means that this is also going to be an eight mark question. Okay, and once again, we need to show knowledge, application, analysis only. So let's read the question. Analyze the importance of social objectives as MUCA prepares a five-year marketing plan for MA. So when I read this, I can, highlight or I can point out that there are a couple of important concepts that are being tested here. Social enterprises and marketing plan. So my answer has got to be a mixture of the two. Okay. And we have to figure out for MAA that when they go to make their five-year plan, so that's the part about application here, that this is what you have to talk about. How important is it? Right, so it's good and it's bad. So it's uh, not evaluation, sorry, analysis. Uh, so this is your analysis. This is where you're looking if it's going to have a positive impact or negative impact if they use more social objectives. And of course, the idea should be that by promoting yourself as a socially um, uh, aware business, you should be able to increase uh, your sales, increase your prices, increase your promotions, all those things that we're going to talk about. Okay, so uh, this is still an eight mark question. So you start with a bit of knowledge and application and then two points and we'll see how uh, 
uh, in a marketing plan, first of all, let's talk about marketing plan, right? A marketing plan includes, of course, the larger concept includes uh, objective, it has research and strategy and tactics, and then you go to evaluation, right? So here, in a question, in an eight mark question, focus on the actual four P's, the part about tactics, because even when you answer for a marketing plan, the marks that you get for analysis are when you talk about the four P's, product, price, space, and promotion. So here, since this is an analysis question, we'll have to focus on how can they change the product, price, place, or promotion when they make the new five-year plan and how important it is to promote themselves as a socially aware business. Okay, so for this, there are two parts of the case study that we need to look at. First of all, when we were uh, in the initial part, we were given their social objectives. So they want to promote the importance of wildfire conservation. Uh, again, you, when you develop your marketing plan, they mentioned later on that they already promoted a lot. So maybe more doing more of this, is, it should be part of your marketing plan. Uh, inspire and educate visitors to its uh, animal park. So maybe you can bring a change in the product to do that offer employment to the local population. So you already do that and promoting that will bring more uh, socially aware uh, customers to your business. So there's a lot of good things that can come from promoting yourself as a social enterprise. And here they talk about the marketing plan. Let's just read it again. Um, MA is a seasonal business and most foreign tourists visit during the summers, during the summer. MEA promotes itself through the tourist board of country G and through local tour companies and hotels. MUCA's key marketing objective is to attract more local visitors and foreign tourists, especially during the less busy seasons. To help achieve this objective, she will prepare a five-year marketing plan for MEA. And we also know that already uh, wildlife conservation is very prominent in all their marketing communications, right? They also have an education center uh, with displays and activities. So that's also something they can promote within their product. Uh, information about rare animals, the more you promote that, the more customers will come to you. Uh, you can also uh, promote your other products that you're selling. So there's a lot of things that you can include that should be part of your social objectives as well as your marketing plan. So let me show you how I would do this. Again, start by a bit of knowledge and application, connecting them together. So in a question like this, I would define marketing plan. Okay, and just explain that it is there to help uh, the company achieve its marketing goal. Okay. okay, and since social objective is also part of the question, you should mention that MAA is a social enterprise. Right, and they have three uh, objectives, right, that were mentioned there. So we're going to connect it to that. And sort of application that we can bring in here is that uh, when looking to uh, attract local and foreigners, locals and foreigners. Remember, that's the objective. It was given in that paragraph there, so we should lead with that. In order to attract more locals and foreigners, she needs to prepare, she needs to not prepare, she needs to highlight these social elements. And of course, that's for better brand image, more sales, et cetera, et cetera. So connecting the two things, let's go into the first point of discussion. So this is my, uh, point number one. And once again, lead with application. So we can talk about how they already uh, promote wildlife conservation, right? Conversation, not conversation, conservation. Okay. And when it comes to your marketing plan, when you look at your four P's, part of it is 
promotion. And if they can increase um, promotion about this to foreign tourists, increase foreigners. Mm, no, that's not the right grammar. Hold on. Increase promotions to foreigners. And later on, we see in the case study that foreigners are happy to pay up to $15. That's what research tells them, right? So there is another reason for you to make sure that the, the foreigners know as much as they can about the wildlife conservation programs that they have, uh, include uh, education packages, And, and doing all of that should lead to more uh, customers visiting. Right, increase in revenue. Okay, so we're talking about the social element. We're also connecting it to one of the elements of the four Ps, the marketing plan, and the benefit of doing that, the importance of doing that, is that it's what's uh, going to set them apart. Uh, you can also mention that they should uh, promote the rare species that they are, right? Rare species of birds and animals that they have. That should be part of their marketing as well. So that's where it's very important to include your social element because when these customers uh, come in, when you promote these rare species, you can charge more and using the number here that makes it better application that we can charge them up to $15. Okay, I hope that makes sense how I'm combining marketing plan and social objectives and taking the lead from the social objective. Okay, um, then let's look at another one of the social objectives. What, where were they? So, offer employment to, so we've kind of mixed the first two, uh, promote and educate. Uh, they offer employment to the local population and they do offer that, right? They they uh, sell these high quality homemade textile items which are made by local women's cooperatives. So part of that is also helping the, the society, the local community. Not only that, uh, when we were looking at the HR side, they also hire people as volunteers for MLS Popular Work Experience Program. And uh, I'm guessing they're from the local area. So, so a couple of points here that show that they do look after the, uh, the society as well, the local community, which is the second of the three triple bottoms and bottom lines, right? Uh, <clears throat> social one. And that should be my second point here in third paragraph, point number two which is to provide local employment. <clears throat> and part of application should also be that they already um, have uh, they work with local women's cooperative right they can promote that as diversity uh they also hire locally for experience programs And what they should do is they should highlight all of these. Again, promotion, uh, doing that will attract uh, ethical workers, right? That's good for quality. And why is that important? They were already facing recruitment problems.
and attract ethical customers. <clears throat> okay, so mixture of both marketing plan along with um, social objectives being the leading point. Um, anything you guys think I might have included and missed out? Um, yeah, I guess you could say that people also come in for their safari drive. So that could also be promoted more uh, to the foreigners. Uh, so I don't think foreigners would come in for work. They're coming to visit. Anyone who wants to come in to work there, then they would have to start living there. So that would make them a local, right? So, and hiring foreign would mean very, very high cost. They already have high labor costs. So I don't think that's, that's advisable. <clears throat> All right, are we okay with the first two questions? The first was about depreciation of currency. Then we just looked at marketing plan and social enterprise. So first two questions done. I hope we are okay. I wanna to move to the third one now. In the third question, we'll start with a calculation. And here we are asked to calculate price elasticity of demand. So straight away, write the formula. PD is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. And how do you calculate percentage change? New minus old divided by old. Okay, so what you have to do in this situation is first calculate the percentage change for quantity, then do it for price, and then simply equate the two. Okay, so we are given here for price, right? We are being asked to calculate price elasticity of demand for local visitors to MA if the entry price is increased from 10 to 12. So we can do it for number two here. We Let's say for uh, percentage change in price, new price is 12, the old is 10 divide, divided by old, which is also 10. This makes it <clears throat> 2 over 10, right? That is simply 0.2. And quantity, we got to look it up from the case study, and it's given here. Uh, so, uh, entry price from 10 to 12 would lead to a decrease in the average number of local visitors. So, we're given the quantity here, and uh, visitors fall from 9,500 to 6,000. So let's find out 9,500 to 6,000. So 6,000 is new, okay? So percentage change in quantity demanded is 6,000 is the new one, minus 9,500 is old divided by 9,500. Uh, so this becomes 6,000 minus 9,500 is 3,500 divided by 9,500 uh, minus 0.37. Okay, so now simply uh, uh, take it to the formula and PD then becomes point minus 0 0.37 divided by 0 0.2. This divided by is equal to minus 1.842. Okay, that's the way to calculate PED every time. Uh, can you please show question two slide for a second? Okay, so here is question two slide for a second. And, okay. So the first question was PED. The answer is minus 1.842. And we know that this would be elastic. Okay, that means even if you change the price for a little bit, quantity demanded will change by a lot. 
Notice one thing here though. This is PD for local visitors. Okay. This will come in handy later. So we're talking about local customer that if you increase the price a little bit, local customers can go somewhere else. They live close to a beautiful natural reserve. There must be other parks as well. So this would make sense that they are price elastic. Then the second calculation asks us for this change in monthly total contribution from local visitors if the price is increased from 10 to 12. Okay, now let's remind ourselves first of all of the formula of contribution. Contribution is selling price minus variable cost. Okay, so what we have to do now is calculate individually contribution at different prices. So if the price was at 10, what would be the contribution? If price was 12, what would be the contribution? So let's do it at $10 first, at $10. If the price is 10, we need the variable cost. And variable cost was given to us in the case study. Here it is given. Variable cost per customer is three fifty. Okay, so um, ten minus three fifty will give you first six fifty. The next step is to multiply it by quantity, and initially we were at ninety five hundred. So this was contribution per unit. This is contribution overall. So 9500 times 6.5. This gives me a value of 61750. Okay, so that is the first one there at 10. Then the price changes from 10 to 12. Right, and now we've got to do it for 12. So at $12, at not to $12, 12, oh, oh, 12 minus P50, right? So this becomes 850. This will be multiplied by the new quantity, of course, which was 6,000. If this was given in the case study, we saw that earlier on as well. So eight and a half times six thousand six thousand gives me a number of fifty one thousand. Now, notice what the question is asked for. It doesn't ask for ten or twelve. It has asked for the change in monthly contribution. So you've got to find the difference between the two. So the change is. 61750 minus 51,000. Yeah, minus 51,000 is 10,750. That is the change in total contribution when the price goes from $10 to $12. <laughs> okay. And of course, we are losing this. So I'm going to call this minus here. This is minus 10,000. We can see contributions going down. You can see here, it has decreased. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, you, you, you will get marks for writing a formula, yes. Any confusions about the calculation? Uh, PED or total contribution? And by the way, even though contribution is falling, it is a negative contribution, right? Contribution would be 51,000. You're making more, you're making positive contribution, but it will be less than what you would have made 61,750 if you continue to charge ten dollars okay that's what that means and when it comes to PED PED tells us that it is 
elastic, which means that even if you change the price by a little bit, a lot of customers might leave, uh, might stop coming to the park. So that's how we will use this in our essay answers. So let's get to the essay answer now. It is here. Refer to your answer from uh, to your results from part A and other information. Recommend whether MAA should change its entry price. Justify your recommendation. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I don't think there's anything to define here. I mean, you could define PED if you wanted, but I don't want to lead with that. I don't want to start describing PED because I first want to set up my answer. A bit of application, telling them what the situation is, right? And for that, I just want to take you back to the part about the case study where it's discussed here. Uh, and here. So Muka wants to increase MAA's rip. In fact, I will also include this part, right? Uh, we know that they already have display center activities. They sell through the souvenir shop. Uh, so, so that's where sales are coming from and that's popular among formulas, for foreigners and local visitors. They also have safari drives and bird watching tours. And uh, this is usually overbooked. They don't have enough vehicles as yet to accommodate everyone. So this is quite popular. Um, Muka wants to increase MAA's revenue. She is thinking about increasing the entry price from ten to twelve dollars for all adult customers, or charging a higher price just to foreign tours. Right. So here are my two options. I can either do it for all, or just to foreign tours. And what does research tell us? Research tells us that if price increases from ten to twelve. Uh, the average number of local visitors will fall and we see that PED confirms that. However, and this part is important, however, most foreign tourists would be happy to pay up to $15. Right. Now, a uh, pop quiz for you guys here. Can you tell me, oh, very good, Anmol, you already answered the question that I was going to ask. So, uh, I was going to ask what type of pricing strategy would you call when you're charging different customers different prices and rightly that's called price discrimination so that's one option price discrimination and maybe that's the right option because local people don't want to be charged more foreigners are happy to pay more you can charge up to 15 dollars in keeping your variable cost to let 350 so even if you charge 12 dollars from local visitors you will still be able to earn more from the foreign tourists by charging them $15, right? So maybe it's a good idea to not mess around with local prices. You want locals to keep coming in. You want to make sure that there is a regular stream of revenue coming in. <clears throat> and when foreigners uh, do come in the busy seasons, uh, you can always charge them more prices. And for the less busy seasons, you can keep the same price for your uh, local visitors. So that's going to be my argument. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go to the answer. Sorry about the disease. Um, so let's talk about, first of all, um, PED, right? Price, elasticity, demand, what we've calculated. And then uh, we always start with the application part that the PED is elastic uh, at minus 1.842. Okay, and what does that mean? Uh, a small change in price would bring about a big fall in local visitor. Okay, and why is this a bad idea? So it is advised not to increase prices for locals. This will be useful, useful in less busy season. <clears throat> uh, right. Then we can talk about um, the part about contribution. And contribution is a positive 51,000, but falling 
five, ten thousand and seven fifty dollars. Right, that's what we figure out. That that's the fall in uh, contribution if you increase the price. Um, and that might create problems. You pay for. Uh, maintenance, for example, that's a fixed cost, right? And that's important. Maintenance is important for, it's important for customer safety. They mentioned that in the case study that you have customer safety is an important part of the business. So <clears throat> that's something that uh, perhaps could become problematic later on. Um, again, we're talking about calculations together. So I'm going to evaluate it together, together that how reliable are the numbers? That's the easiest way to evaluate this reliability, reliable, uh, numbers, right? There can also be a change in the external environment. For example, people's income might start rising because the government is now stable. There's now a stable government. So maybe that will turn things around for the local visitors. For the yeah, for the local visitors. <clears throat> so again, evaluate the tip points as you go along. And uh, <clears throat> is the question asking us for a recommendation? It is. So always recommend in the end. Okay, do not decide at the start or halfway through your uh, halfway through your uh, answer. What is this one doing here? Sorry, give me one second. Just need some housekeeping. Okay, please. Uh, something in right. That's betterish. Okay, that's more like it. Okay, now talk about. Uh, so I guess one one minute I want to get back to I guess I can call this uh, my assessment of local visitors, right? That's what I've done here. My PED and contribution were all about local visitors, right? So here I can also evaluate that maybe uh, not increasing. Price, uh, keeping it at ten dollars, is advice. And then I can talk about my foreign visitors. You know, now that I think about it, you could have started this answer by talking about the objective, right? What is the objective? To increase more local and foreign visitors both. So you could have started with that. They would have given you some uh, application to start with. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead. Foreign visitors, right? Uh, they are happy to pay $15, right? That means you'll be able to earn more contribution. Right, and just run a little analysis here. 15 minus 350, that means you will be earning $11.50 contribution if you're able to charge $15, right? So just a little extra uh, flavor of numbers there. So if this is a situation, then already we know that currency is depreciating. So we are expecting foreigners, right? You can also include, uh, not include the word is you can increase prices for safari rides as well. Remember they are very popular and often there is more demand, less supply. So more safari rides. That's also a way to earn through this. <clears throat> uh, and so it is advised 
to increase prices. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> What if customer foreign customers retaliate? Well, if you're a tourist, um, <clears throat> I think you are happy to pay a little bit extra. That's what I'm trying to think. What you can evaluate here is that how will competition respond? Right? If they reduce their prices, then that will mean you're in trouble. So that's something you can use for evaluation here, right? So in the end, remember they asked for recommendations. So you have to come up with a strategy going forward for them. And it has to be a mixture of this, right? Not increasing for locals, increasing for foreigners. So in the end, uh, the end, my recommendation. would be to use uh, wait a second use price discrimination strategy right and just explain what that means it means uh ten dollars for locals and uh, 15 for <clears throat> okay uh i guess one more thing that i can include here is evaluation uh, is and i think that's very important how important is profitability Right. Why are you increasing the prices? And why am I asking that question? Because these guys are a social enterprise. Right. So what sort of a message does that provide? Uh, so is that good for image? And right. not to forget, they already receive grants, right? Grants, they also receive charities. So why get greedy? That's also something to uh, use as evaluation in the end. I think that should do it. The question was recommend in the end, we looked at the situation with foreigners. We looked at the situation with locals. Of course, the objective was to keep an eye on both and sales from both. I think in the end, we have a suggestion for them, but even that comes with a bit of additional evaluation. Huh. Any questions about this one? No, we're good. Anything else that we've done today? Uh, we looked at PED, we looked at contribution, we answered a question on marketing plan, there was a discussion on currency exchange rate. Nope. All right. Excellent then. Uh, satisfied if you're satisfied so um i'm going to stop at this point with this case study uh the next two questions of course we'll carry this forward in our next session and we'll answer question four and question five from that question four is a combination of age uh, operations and finance and then the last question is on hr um can you explain the last point for the first question uh, this part about homemade textiles and they can export those as additional income. Well, you know how they mention here that MA Parks also had uh, has a successful souvenir shop which sells high quality products, including homemade textile items made by local women's cooperatives. So they also have a product which is this one. So if 
foreigners you can also are coming in another way to get gain the advantage from depreciation of currency is that you can start exporting right you also become cheaper for the rest of the world so car your textile will become cheaper so you can also export that because of it mm -hmm. You're welcome all right, then that's it from me. Uh, so next session, we will finish the rest of the case study. Uh, until then, thank you. You were a great audience. See you next time. Bye-bye.